Um, it's about six o'clock on Thursday, May the second. Welcome to May. Um, and I'm going to call the meeting to order. First thing is set adjust the agenda. Do we have any changes? Yes. Um, I need to add an item for the select board to consider two letters of support, one for the downtown partnership for a tree grant and another for NEK Arts <coughs> Community Facilities Grant for installation of the lift at the townhouse. I'd like to make this item number four and bump the others down by one. Whoa. That was okay. You were hoping for some subtractions. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that really buggers things up. Yeah. It's a letter of support for downtown partnership. Yep. And what was in Neck Arts for in installing the list of cultural facilities grants. Was someone late getting these requests to the No, we've always been gonna do it, but we just didn't do it last time I wasn't here. Okay. Any other changes? I can motion to approve those uh, additions to the agenda. Second. Uh, all in favor of approving the amended agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, next, communication from the audience. Anybody here to talk about something that's not on our agenda? Just about everybody. Just about everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, who wants to go first? I will. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, you have to state your name for us. I'm uh, Jeff Perry. Thank you. Lived here and had it my entire life. And I'm interested in the property on 40 Carrier Road. I'd like to move my all my stuff off Hopkins Hill down to that vicinity so we don't have to deal with hill and mud season. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, just, you know, waiting, you know, I don't know what the town's going to do with it and just hoping that we might get a chance at it. Okay. To buy it. Goodbye. Yeah, that'd be great. So, um, thank you for coming. Um, what I I, understand, I think you thought about this. Um, what would you do with the existing structures on that? Property? Yeah, probably we demolish them. Yeah. Okay. And probably we wouldn't be able to afford to build new right off eventually. Yeah. Okay. So primarily to move move your business essentially. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great, thanks for coming. Any questions for Jeff? Excellent. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, typically, we don't do something in communication from the audience, we just listen. No, okay. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Right. okay. <laughs> But we do I'm have to. We do have to decide what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do have to decide what we're going to do. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, I don't know. Please. All right. Anybody else want to communicate anything to us? Yeah, uh, John Lagus, East Hartford, and I'd like to talk about the bridge on Porterbrook Road. Okay. Harvey Farm Road. Harvey Sorry. Yeah. Harvey Farm Road. Over Porterbrook. Yes. All right, so I, I, we've I, had some updates. Yeah, I've like I've been updating the board on my end of things, and I just like you, I just like the board to hear kind of operationally what you're up against, so they know um, that it, you know the stuff I'm trying to do is this is the other end of it. Yeah. So I want them to know what you're up against operationally. If you can just kind of paint the picture for them. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, as probably everybody's aware, after the flood, we um, took it upon ourselves to temporarily fix the bridge um, to get the farm going back again in, in operation. The road was closed, and um, it worked well. We were able to do all of our work that we needed to, and then when the temporary bridge went in, um, it essentially shut the farm down. Um, there's not a Every tractor I own can go across the bridge, but people don't drive around in tractors. There's not an implement that fits across the bridge. Um, you know, milk trucks, grain trucks, manure trucks, um, coming and going from the farm. Um, this past week I hired some, actually some special manure equipment that cost me more money than normal, but they were a little shorter 
tractor trailer truck that was able to just barely sneak through the bridge compared to a regular one. Um, some of those fields of mine are within eyesight of the farm and that's you know a four, five, six mile round trip around. Um, Porter Brook Road and Montgomery Road are not roads made for large trucks and large tractors. I've been hauling manure the past 10 days up those roads and, and, and it's dangerous. You know, from like Jan Gagne's up to the Rick Sullivan's, it's terrible in there. Porter Brook Road down by the bridge, um, extremely dangerous. Um, now with all the regulations uh, with the state, with the manure applications, um, I, I gotta get the manure off the farm. I, I cannot keep dumping it close to the buildings. I'm, I'm actually in default with, uh, with my um, MFO permit because I've had to apply so much manure because I had to get rid of it, you know, last fall. And right now I'm doing the same thing. I'm just trying to get it off the farm. And, um, you know, it, last summer it worked for us. They shut the road down, um, which was wonderful. Um, we used the bridge at our own risk. Um, a bunch of us neighbors all got together and, and I feel that the fix was fine. There's nothing wrong with the safety of the bridge until a new one goes in. And um, when the temporary bridge got in, it just it shut my farm down, but allowed every you know, Honda, Toyota, and Subaru in the state of Vermont to use my road, except us. And when the road was shut down, anybody coming up from East Hardwick could go to Montgomery Road if they needed to go to Greensboro, and they'd go down Porter Rook Road if they needed to go to Hardwick. There might be three or four people on Reno Road that could have been inconvenienced by the bridge being out. But that did not inconvenience anybody. And, um, you know, I just assumed stuff, assumptions are bad, but I assumed stuff was going to happen quicker than it was. And it just seems like the, the bureaucratic, bureaucracy is just crazy. It, it's, it's endless. Um, and I really propose that we just tear that temporary bridge out close the road down and let us go back to using the old bridge. You know, it's, it's crazy when I'm harvesting feed, the time spent going around, or, or the expense of hiring extra trucks to keep up with the harvester. You know, so when those machines are running, I'm pushing five or $600 an hour. Um, so it's, just, it's costing me a lot of money. Um, and I just, it does, it does not seem, seem like there's a solution that's going to happen quickly. And I'm very frustrated with the people at higher levels than the town. And I just feel they'll just keep screwing with us forever. And um, I, I really would like to take action before the summer goes away. Um. The last report we had from you, there was, I know you were skeptical about it, but there was a proposal from somebody at VTrans about it, uh, potentially doing a, uh, the river river crossings. Ford crossing. Yeah, I talked to John about the river crossings, and there's some concern on their end about that, and that would uh, not be, that would, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, since the last meeting, I had a conversation with Logan Perrin from VTrans, who was tasked with helping the town of Harvick with this problem from upper levels of state government. And the last conversation I had with, with him, I told him, I think we're going to rip the bridge out um, and return it to the way it was and close the road. He s cited a statute uh, in Title 23 that we could give the Lagos Farm permission to use the road as, as it's closed. Mm -hmm. um, or we could give the two, and the two residents on the other side of the bridge, we could give them permission to use it. But if we give them permission to use it, the, it's unclear where, where the liability is. But I was thinking we could have, sign a waiver, sign some release. Mm -hmm. If they, if we give them permission to use the bridge, um, they're using it at their own risk. Mm -hmm. I'd be more than willing to sign. That doesn't, um, there's another problem associated with the work that we've done to that, the temporary bridge that we put in. Um, it's uh, about $23,000 that project cost us. 
if we take that out, um, the the money will be the the FEMA money will be no longer. That project will be null and void. So we wouldn't get reimbursed for we it. We wouldn't get reimbursed for that work. For the twenty three thousand dollars, or for the future bridge that we're putting in, like no, the, the twenty three thousand okay. for the temporary. So there's there's two projects. There's an emergency measures project, and then okay. there's the permanent work project. We're still good with the permanent work project, but the emergency measure project twenty two thousand we wouldn't be eligible for. But it seems like that unless we waited, unless we waited to rip the bridge out and got that project obligated and then pulled the bridge. But I don't know what their timeline is. Um, I was up there today with FEMA, taking measurements, um, trying to push that project forward. If we can get it in the queue to get up, get the money obligated for it, and then we can pull the bridge and go with the road, the road closure. Um, but that's the, it's a balancing act. It's a timing act. And um, I did see all the manure trucks cross the bridge today. Uh, no tractors, just manure trucks. Um, and then I had some, I had some other questions regarding op farm operations with the bridge, um, as far as like what equipment, <coughs> excuse me, what equipment needs to go over the bridge after the manure spreading season is done, um, and then the time frame of your chopping season. And mowers, rakes, yeah. and chopper. Okay. Which is the whole. And that's, and that's the mowers, rakes, and choppers is to the fields, and then you have forage wagons going back and forth to the farm. With trucks back and forth. That can go over that bridge. Yes, a 10-wheeler okay. truck, straight truck, can go over. Yeah. Okay. So the tractors and, the, and the, the high dumps and the mowers, they're not going back and forth. They're going from field to field? Correct, ahead of the harvester. Okay. So, so basically, there's a lot, a lot of logistics. But just from from other reports that we've gotten, just to like see everything that's on the table. Yeah. And what B Trans has given us is the fuel option, the replacing it to the two lane bridge, right? Which is the that's a hundred two hundred thousand right. dollar option. But yeah. that's the, that's an option they gave us. Yeah. Ninety foot bridge. Ninety foot bridge. Yeah. Not ideal for that spot. And then basically this option. So it sounds like we have we. This can is our do local this. option. This is our local option, but we maybe are not being able to recoup twenty grand. Yeah. Which we talked about at the last meeting, how if we did um, the culverts and the, the that temporary bridge, that would be about the same cost as 20. I mean, yeah. and this is my personal opinion, but I think the local option seems like a good temporary fix until we're able to put in a, another bridge. A permanent, permanent, the permanent fix. Yeah. Which sounds like we're hoping to do mm -hmm. as soon as we can. You know, the cycle of the seasons is, is this is for corn. Three weeks from now, it'll yes. be for second cut, yes. third mm -hmm. cut. So that every there's manure, there's the harvest, there's manure, there's the harvest. So I mean, it essentially goes that same cycle goes through till October. Yeah. And you know the other point I'd like to bring up is that um, we put a fair amount of time and materials into that fix. Yeah. And and totally understood that from the get-go, but that was a cheap investment compared to the alternative. So, I, you know, you were busy downtown, hard work, and nobody was going to bother us up there. We did what we had to do, yeah. and, it, and it worked. Um, but, but there was an investment in, in materials, time, and equipment um, that went into that fix on, on my part, which I, I do not want anything for, but I'm saying there is an investment there, mm -hmm. and I did it to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, understanding mm -hmm. that you guys had bigger problems downtown, mm -hmm. and I told Opie if he, uh, you guys tore the bridge out and put a concrete barrier up, um, I'd remove them and um, take whatever responsibilities came back on me, um, and I'd put them back after we got done hanging. But um, I just that you know that that is not an inconvenience to anybody with that road being closed. And then there's the. The permanent work that is that crossing will be down for a period of time to do the permanent work, and we're going to try to do it in October into the winter construction season. I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, you know, I can accept 
whatever that is. Yeah. Because that's life. Yeah. You know, nobody, you know, natural disasters and Mother Nature. Believe me, I'm used to dealing with them. So, so I, I understand that potentially that could screw us up. But I'd rather have that one screw up than go through this whole season right. yeah. being two, screwed up. Three years being screwed up. It's exactly. Up exactly. It. So I, I already told Opie to get rid of the bridge the other day. I don't know why it ain't gone yet, but <laughs> we need to be real about it. We're gonna. I, I don't think we're going to play games with FEMA on getting reimbursed for that temporary bridge. I think we just need to eat it because I've never gotten any federal money for any time ever without them making sure that their investment was going to be in place for okay. the cause. I want you to listen to Casey's report at the end of this meeting about our cash flow right now. It's bad. Yeah. So just so, but that the money's mind. already spent. That keep money's already spent. Is yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. And I don't think I do what you want to do. It's your call. But I'm just putting it all out there. It's not my call. It's the board's call. My point is yeah. that that money is spent, spent, and it's gone. Yeah. And it just should be gone. Okay. There's going to be additional cost taking that bridge out. Hmm. That's a concern. Yeah. But that's the only one. Yeah. And I don't think you should try to some bang a ding a ding dong FEMA mm -hmm. to get reimbursed for a bridge you're taking out. I just said it makes sense to me. No, I don't think it's ethical. No, I don't. I think if we're going to take the bridge out, we take the bridge out. We eat the 23 grand and we spend the 20 grand it's going to take to take the bridge out. We get it done and let these people go back to work. You know, I'd be willing to remove it. I wouldn't dissent to uh, take it apart, but I'd be willing to remove it and put the old bridge back into place with my equipment. Well, I'm isn't we don't question? act on things during isn't the communication from the isn't audience. Isn't that a question for the state because it's their temporary bridge? What's that? Isn't that one of the state's temporary bridges? We don't well, own. We that. rent it. Yeah, so we they would take it. Fee. They would take it out. Um, no, 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 we're responsible. We put it in. We take it out. Yeah, but they pick it up. We would <laughs> we arrange for right? trucking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have to transport it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we I have two questions, when we close a road. I think before we just had road closed signs. Mm -hmm. Is that all we have to do? Are we do we are we mandated to do no, anything we can, else? We can just close the road. We just say road closed. Yeah. We don't and have to get rid of We don't have to put up barriers or anything. We no. just put up signs. Permanent sign would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know those ones would blow over. The yeah. Fabric ones would blow over frequently, but. And then. Um, we would probably want to ask for some. Um, so we are communicating from the audience still, so. So yeah, so what's the, what do we, um, what do we do? So uh, the other question I have is winter. So winter comes around again. I'd like Tom to have input on the winter mm -hmm. uh, maintenance because that's the reason why the bridge was put in in the first place. But if it's closed. So, right, so technically, you know, you're putting our asses on the line. Mm -hmm. So if we go through that bridge, well, if it's closed, we're not going to plow. Road is closed. Road is closed. So I that mean, does create a problem, right? So one way or the other, I'm not taking our trucks across it. Right, I agree with you. If if we close the road and it's take closed. the bridge, it's closed. Right. So, so then you got the liability of the other people going across mm -hmm. that haven't signed. Well, if they worried. go through, I'm not worried about the other pencil. Logan and I talked about that. It's closed. Yeah. So it doesn't meet the statute. It doesn't meet the definition of a roadway at that point. Right. So, is, so is that whole section of Harvick Farms from from Porterbrook down not plowed by the town then? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's we, got what plow, we got to plow two dead end plow jobs there. The houses on both sides of that bridge. Well, you know? I plow down to the bridge itself. We could. We got to widen the turnaround down below where it goes in the lower field. We got to widen that out so the truck so can turn around there. You just have to do it on one side, right? This now. is a lot of because no yeah, else, where uh, uh, Reno goes there and the other side of the field there. Where you guys hey, 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 there for yeah. Reno, you know, right there. Right, right, but no, but you wouldn't have to do that. The plowing part. You don't have to plow on, on our side. I plow on your side. <laughs> Correct. Right, right. right. And, and, you know, I told old people, I said I'd be more than willing to plow to keep that bridge open for the milk trucks and grain trucks. Like, right. subject, different rules? I mean, nobody even needs to know that, but, but that would be very easy for me. I, I know schedules and deliveries. Yeah. Are we hoping to have that bridge project being done this fall anyway? We could push to try to get that going and out to bid and done. We could. There's there's a possibility we could have that work done before we're but you're going to have to get on it. I mean, you're going to have to get the design and everything else done. No way is that ain't going to happen. 
Yeah. No, it's not going to happen. There's no way. By the time you get design and everything out and done, by the time you, they build the box culvert, the size of it and stuff. Yeah, you're not going to find a choice. It sounds like, though, we have a solution. If that bridge is still out, you can widen the turnaround and still plow. And in the meantime, we'll have to make a decision to pull that bridge. And I don't know if that happens right now or in an executive session or when no. later no. or whatever. I mean, it's just a thought because it sounds like there's some logistics like from from the town side for the winter that we have to think about. It would mean waiting for two more weeks, but it might make sense to just make sure we've got all our ducks in a row, figure out what the winter options are, so that way at our next select board meeting, we can say, this is the direction, like actually make it an item that we can vote on. I can, okay, so the state has offered to help with this project. Mm -hmm. What I can do is I can go back to the state and say, well, this is what we've discussed. And the concern all around is the status of this road come winter plowing season. Can they help us with the expedition, the expediting the RFP and the design for the box cover? And see what they say. I don't want to kick the can for too long, but I do think we got we have to think about we just have to make sure that if we're gonna go the local route that we're not in just a couple months making it so it's really difficult to give winter access to all those families. Yeah. You don't necessarily always have to wait the two weeks for the next the meeting. Thing about, the only thing about the winter is just, uh, like he offered that we take care of the road, but if, uh, you know, push into the, to the idea of the winter is, I mean, then our summer is wasted, so. And even two weeks from now, I, I'm probably, in less than three weeks, we will be hanging. Um, and then there's there's one cutting gone. Then right after hanging is manure. It's just it starts that cycle. Um, you know that was probably my biggest fears, right along with this, is that it would just get caught up in yeah. the in the bureaucracy yeah. of it. And, and and John, I appreciate all the communication that you come to, what or brought to me. But I needed to have everybody at this discussion. I understand that. Because this is a big decision for the town, and it's not just the money thing, it's logistics, and it's, and I can't make this decision by myself. I'm not comfortable. And, and you know, I, I've told you a thousand times, yeah. I'm not comfortable with you spending 60000 or 120000 or even the 20000 Yeah. to help us. Yeah. I, I really feel uncomfortable about that, except, and, I, and I've, I've told you that. Yeah. Except, guess what? I do have a business in town. I get it. Mm -hmm. And um, my business, the, the biggest impact on this is, is with farmers. Yeah. So it's not just me, there's Reno, there's other farmers in the neighborhood. But just, you know, m my real estate is $66,000 to the town's coffers. Yeah. And, you know, like that bridge in Greensboro Bend is not inconvenience anybody in the town of Hardwick. But guess who has to fix it? Us. Well, maybe we will, maybe we won't. <laughs> okay, whatever. But what, what I'm saying is, is you know, there, there are situations like that where you suck it up yeah. as a taxpayer, yeah. or that kid that's at 10 miles out in the school bus run, and you still have to send the school bus out. Yeah. It costs everybody money, but it goes into the mix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and this is this is, I feel uh, my business is sizable for the town. Yeah. And then last year, we we just really got pinched hard. Mm -hmm. And I really would like to uh, to um, try to make something happen as quick as we can, and I'd be more than willing to help mm -hmm. in any way that we could. What about removing the bridge and then putting it back for winter? Is that a possibility? Is that Oof. no? <laughs> yeah, but then we're renting the bridge for nothing and sticking it in a pile, then we waste another week. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 good yeah. question. Yeah. We'll give you the answer. Not a good, not a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, fair enough. Well, I don't think it sounds. I mean, it just. It, I think it sounds like we're all for the local, I mean, it sounds like we're generally want to help you out, John. I think the, just the big question is that turnaround and then I like the timing of taking the bridge out and then, so I don't know if we need to like. Well, the turnaround's not a big deal because we already got, you know, we got four feet of material in the road. Right, all that the material. That we have to remove. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's already right there. We just have to add on to the culvert that's already in the ditch. So that's. That part's not a big deal. So, I don't think I don't think anything's going to change between now and next meeting. 
in ter like I don't think anything revelatory is going to come to light. I don't think that somebody like we're not going to have a plan for a replacement. Money's not going to fall out of the sky. But meanwhile, the hay is growing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would like to add just one more comment. When everything was happening after the flood, uh, Tom, I think you were there with one of those state fellows one day I was down there. It was fairly early on, but it was after we had fixed it. You might not have been, there's been so many visits, but <clears throat> I, I don't know what his name is. And he clearly stated that this would not go on record. But when he walked under the bridge, we moved the embutment in. It washed on the east side. The abutment washed out, and it cracked the corner of the deck. Right, you've, you've yeah, it dropped probably about a foot. Correct. The deck. <laughs> we moved. We brought in. Um, I don't remember what it was. Sixty-eight or seventy-two, two by two by four concrete blocks, and brought the abutment in, and put the deck back on it. So that crack is almost not an issue. And and that gentleman from the state said under his breath, you know, that's probably better than it was. <laughs> Except it narrowed the throat mm -hmm. of the brook, which it won't take another hundred year flood. But mm -hmm. guess what? It didn't take this one either, so. Mm -hmm. um. So, seems like we probably ought to take that bridge out. I mean, I'm not hearing a lot of arguments for keeping it in. I'd like to accommodate the Lattice Farm as best we can, being a business in Hardwick. Um, yeah. And so the only thing we have to do to legally close the road is put up road close signs. That seems pretty low. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to allow them to So there's, there's no liability on the town, town park. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Once it's closed, that's, be what, a that's what we're hearing. Logan pointed to a statute in Title 23 that we can give permission for people to use the road close. Mm. The bridge is a different story, I'm, but... No, but if we know that we can... Labor. If we have a road that's closed, yeah. I think Tommy's question is, are we still liable for people using it? In, like, not necessarily... Right, that doesn't have here, permission, right? and then all of a sudden they go through, and all of a sudden that bridge cracks, and that breaks, right. because there's no barriers set up. Is the town liable? Just because the road is closed, it doesn't tell you where the road is closed. Because usually if the road is the closed, road. It, it, it barricaded we, off. We can close it from the, we can close it from Center Road. And they can drive through the field. Or they can drive on the road. It, it's wide enough that, you know, at, at the Porter Brook end, you could put a barrier there that, you know, the road where the sand pile is, it's... Yeah, John, that's the only thing I'm worried you about. Have to if, go by. If, down on the other end, on, on the side, if you put a barrier there with the road sign, I can get around that too. But guess what? If the days I was actually moving with the heavy equipment, I'd move the barrier and I'd put it back. Right. I mean, that's the only thing I'm worried about yeah. is the town's liability mm -hmm. on this. Because the way today's society is, it doesn't matter if it says road close. Somehow, some way, a lawyer will go around that saying, look, you didn't have it barricaded off in my, mm -hmm. you know. He, 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 he actually went through that bridge that was supposed to be closed. That's, that's the only thing I want you guys to look at, that's yeah. all. Just make sure we're not. So, Opie can double check on if there's anything we need to do with it being a bridge to we're, make sure it's closed and we're, we're be... At worst case scenario, you put barriers there and then John, you can move them when you need to. Yeah, I just feel it's those kind of decisions could paralyze us indefinitely. I, I really feel it's just time to uh, put our big boy pants on, do what we can do legally, and, um, and go on from there. Right. And that's, that's just my opinion, and I totally yeah, yeah. understand yeah. your your end of it because you're looking at it differently than I am. Right, because we've already been sued once for water that's already been flowing on somebody's property. Yeah, and the culvert's been there for you know hundred years probably. Yeah. But that, you know, just that part that you yeah. know makes that, me. Yeah, but yeah, and that's always that's a risk. Right. And that and that's an example. Like we've been sued for all kinds of things that you wouldn't think people would be able to sue for, but you can sue anybody for anything. Right. So exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't and know. the trick is just to get a bad lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't 
don't know if it's an extra sign on the bridge saying it's really closed. So, something. Strange <laughs> <laughs> rules. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I just so, want one other comment yeah. on the record. I have not spoken with the two residents that live I was thinking about just that. over the bridge. Yeah. I'd like to make sure that they are aware of this conversation, and I will stop in and chat with them. That's me. Because they are also residents on that road and also taxpayers. Right. So I'm sure they won't mind having less traffic. Yeah. If it's something as simple as like John was just saying signage yeah. at the bridge saying bridge is not safe, you use at your own risk. Or just close. You know, if that yeah. covers no, us. Just yeah. road close. Road close. Yeah. Road closed. Not using yeah. your own risk. Yeah. Just road closed. Yeah. If you use But you are giving people if people are signing off. Written permission. Written it's a, permission. It's a statute. It's a statute. Right, but you're giving them written permission saying use at your own risk. But then we'll draft up a waiver for them to sign that say they're not going to sue us if they, or the milk company. Correct. That, that, that's a, I mean, the milk company is, they, they're going to have, if they're uncomfortable with it, they got to come to us. The road's closed. They're, I, I guarantee you yep. their insurance policies say, if you drive on a road closed and go through with your tractor trailer truck, we're not covering you. And, and if they don't, tough shit. Yeah. They, they can go around. Right. They, they're bitching about it. They won't. Right. But but if they're yeah, not comfortable with that. it, they can go right. around. That's on that. And the same with the two people that live. If they're not comfortable with it, it might be an inconvenience, but they could go up to the farm and down Porter Brook Road to get to Hardwick or up Montgomery Road to get yeah. to Greensboro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they still live there, and we should still. We, I, no, I, I, told, I understand totally that. Yeah. But, but yeah. we still have to do our summer's work also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like this is urgent and needs to be addressed tonight. Well, I do want to make sure all stuff is off our plate. Yep. Okay. So, assuming all stuff is that uh, that we've mitigated the the liability risk, the potential for liability. the potential for yeah. suit. Yeah. Yeah. Then, I mean, it sounds like you've already. I'm kinda, willing to roll the dice. Yeah. Well, it's not really rolling the dice if somebody told you you can do it, right? No, but there, you know, there's there's the the fear that we live in. I'm willing to move beyond the fear yeah. of litigation. Yeah. Okay. What were you doing, motion? But that's just me. I'm one person. Because you're yeah, tipping about a week. Take yeah. Tim made a motion to move the bridge, right? I did make a motion to remove the bridge or allow. John to remove the bridge and do No, we'll take care of the bridge. We'll take care of the bridge, yeah. okay. I know that's our response. So then, yes, making a motion to remove the bridge. I can second that. Discussion. Do we need to attach like the waivers and all that stuff or just let OP do that? Let OP deal with that. <laughs> Favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And, and our intention was not to derail the meeting. Yeah, no. We appreciate the fact that you allowed us to speak, but I am getting, as Opie can probably tell, a little antsy compared to what I was six months ago. Mm -hmm. and, and I really would like to move forward with this. So thank you very much for listening and thank you for your time. Yeah, well, thanks for coming. We've been discussing your past meetings. Yeah, I, I know you. Yeah. yeah. Right, good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> um, uh, other communication from the audience. Okay, next select board to approve minutes from last time, which was April 18th. I can motion to approve the minutes of April 18th as written. Second. I thought they looked good. Anybody? I had one that yeah. I wasn't here, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that they're not painting the Sidewalks, they're painting the crosswalks in uh, the road forming. Oh, department. I did not catch that. <laughs> yeah, so just make that little change. Unless you're going to paint the sidewalks. I'll just put with one minor change and we'll get that corrected. Yep. We can paint the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so technically we, we should probably have <laughs> Sherry makes a motion to adjust the motion to amend the motion to approve the minutes. Yeah. You're going to amend it to uh, have that one correction. Yeah. All right. Okay. We had a motion, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. And a second. And a yep. second. All right. So all in favor of approving the minutes um, with that one change, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Am I supposed to abstain because I wasn't here? Or can I just say aye? You I can. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you read it. Yeah. All right. Well, motion carries. Um, next, um, town manager report. All right, I'll be quick. Um, the pedestrian bridge uh, bid documentation has been um, the final, final, final with the comments has been submitted to uh, USDA for the last time. Thanks to Trace, the work that Tracy and the SE group has done. So we're hoping to put that on the street next week, up to bid. We've got the historic preservation. That historic preservation, state and, and federal um, permits, all the way up to the Coast Guard, with its <laughs> navigable waters. Oh, yeah. um, the whole uh, The whole package deal. So that's gonna be a good project. Um, met with FEMA today on site to discuss the fire department and the wastewater plant. Um, there's still a lot of back and forth with the wastewater plant as to what's permanent work, what is temporary work. Uh, we had the state's consultant there. Um, so I think we were able to get a somewhat of a clear path going forward now. We'll see how long that happens. Um, we're gonna pull, pull the project back from having FEMA do the, the cost study and wait for Aldrich and Elliott to come through with theirs. Their FEMA's just trying to push these projects through. They've been here for 10 months. They're used to dealing with county governments and they're not used to dealing with individual towns. So I think they're getting a little cranky and antsy. Um, so, sorry, the, yeah. the Aldrich and Elliott is the- um, Engineering firm. I know who they are, but yeah, they're yeah. for um, yeah. the report that you're waiting on. Yes, is uh, the a feasibility for replacing replacing or re re relocating mm -hmm. the wastewater plant. The wastewater plant. Got it. Yeah. The and so when you said FEMA, so FEMA had previously been working on that themselves. Yes. Uh oh. Yeah. I guess I wasn't aware. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and the fire station, there's they've um, we submitted a. Uh, substantial damage determination, which happens on the local level with 51% uh, damage. So it's over the threshold for, um, for damage, um, substantially damaged, and they kicked it back. They said it wasn't substantially damaged. The state's consultant is working on that to try and figure out how we can still um, do, potentially move it, mm -hmm. or if we have to, to rebuild it, mm -hmm. it has to be three feet higher than the base flood elevation. So obviously that, because of our local codes and standards, so obviously that's not gonna work. So there are two complex projects that I'm learning a lot about, but we have a consultant from the state and um, pushing back on FEMA as much as possible. So it's kind of a headache and stressful, um, but we're gonna just keep going forward with it. Uh, we got, uh, so when a project from FEMA is obligated, um, the money goes through the state and we enter an agreement with the state, with the state and we just signed off on 74,000 in payments for three other projects. That was um, Fisher Folly. Tucker Brook Bridge Tucker, rebuild. Tucker Brook Bridge. And, and pump, the pump stations. So we're, money is trickling in. And those were temporary fixes on those roads. Those are all uh, emergency measures work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we haven't done much permanent work yet. Right. The retaining wall that is going to go into the bid oh, with right. the bridge, the bridge. that's yep. going to be our first permanent work project. Yeah. The main South yeah. Street retaining wall. Um, green up day is on Saturday. Um, we're asking that folks catalog any, if they're picking up on the LVRT for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail or along the riverbanks of the Lamoille, we're asking that we, they catalog and photograph areas where there's still man, large piles of man-made debris. Um, I've- You mean like from the flood? From the flood. Okay. 
Um, Vermont Emergency Management is still trying to figure out how they're going to clean up the man-made debris along the river. Um, I have sent drone footage of Hardwick Lake and down through the Jackson Dam and the Lamoille West, you know, on the west end of town. So, I mean, they're not going to find any new piles, but they're all still there. But if they can just catalog them, photograph them before um, stuff starts growing. So, um, we'll put that on the website and on Front Porch Forum. And we got one RFP response uh, for the Emergency Watershed Protection Program. I'm not sure if that's going to meet uh, the NRCS requirements for procurement or not. Okay. So, that's, yep. that's my report. Great. What about the project manager for the bridge? Um, me for now. We need to hire someone. Yeah. Does anybody want to be a project manager for the pedestrian bridge? <laughs> we need to put it out. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, next up, road foreman report. We have Tom. No, we already went through it with the break, right? No, there's more. Yeah. You, made, you made some beautiful catch basins down there. Yeah. Well, yeah. in anticipation of the pavement project, if it ever comes. Uh, we've repaired the two catch, catch, catch basins out front here. Uh, we've got a majority of our roads uh, graded. Uh, there's still a few roads that we still have left to grade uh, for the first round. Uh, the guys have been up on Montgomery and parts of Hardwick Farms ditching on that way. Uh, we did a small ditching uh, area over in East Hardwick Village. Oh, we figured out Todd's truck. We got that fixed, uh, but he needs a new spring there for the front. so. That's heading down with clouds next week to get that fixed. Uh, what else? Is that it? New banners. We put the banners on so it shows out. Hydro flushing. Yeah, we did hydro flushing. Okay. Can you, um, the paving project on North Main Street that you did the catch basins for, what's. Is, that's more than when they when they actually come. That's we anticipate more than just a ton new top coat on there, right? Well, we're grinding it down two inches. We're grinding. Yeah, we're grinding it down two inches. Then we'll put two inches back. And what about trying to re-slope all the places to the various catch basins? How does well, that hopefully happen? the paving will take care of that. Paving. Then we're supposed to meet with the guy from the state. He's supposed to come up, what, within the next couple of weeks? For the LBRT? Yeah, for, for right here. Yeah. The water running out. Oh. So we can figure out what we have to do with that. Well, we're hoping that that's the railroad's problem because there's a culvert that's on their valuation sheet. So we're hoping that that's a LBRT problem in project. Hmm. I'm going to push for that. Yeah. Okay. When you bring him up, have him look on the the crossing at Brickhouse Road is there. They might maybe could take it on too. What's that? The crossing, the LBRT crossing on Brickhouse Road is getting washed out again. It's always that's like that little ditch is always tricky. But it's probably there. It's basically their spot. But if he's in town, might as well look at it because it's just yep. it yep. goes right past that little bump out and just washes it, washes it out. And I also met with uh, Lafayette today to do guide rows on Carrier Road there where we had the slide. Uh, to put some guardrails up around there so we can get rid of our barriers there and redo the guardrails that's on the backside of MacDill Pond, Atkins Lane, because mm -hmm. those are all kind of laying down and stuff. So, yeah. so we're going to do those two sections for us. Don't know when, but okay. we're in a loop with that. So, okay. And then we'll be moving up to the pit tomorrow because we've got to do some work up there so they can haul out some sand for the sewer, sewer plant stuff and hopefully get it ready so we can get crush, crushing coming too. So. No, let's see, what else did we do? Monday there, we all went to an M-Shop class. That's for mining and stuff. So we can go in pits and our own pit and everything else, so. All right. I'm going to add another state conversation to your plate, but every time I drive by that School Street spot in East Hardwick, it's definitely, I'm not putting lines out, but I drive past it multiple times a day. And it's like getting, it's definitely gets worse every time there's a rain. Yeah, I'm hoping it's going to get close enough to Vermont 16 yeah. that B-Trans has to take care of it. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be within their right-of-way. It's awfully close. It's like yeah. two feet away. 
Maybe we or can if ask. I get on a bucket of water, we're, we're and kind of go by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's, seri- a big that's a fix. serious fix. That's a big fix that we're not taking on. Yeah. It's got to be like a 200 foot drop. It's a serious drop. Mm-hmm. Fun. Okay, cool. Right. We've got a so very road. Yeah. yeah. Maybe once it gets to the yellow line, it's like two feet away, we can. It's pretty close to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up at the corner. It's yeah. All right. Uh, next is Hardwick Police Department report. Mr. Henry. Short and sweet. Uh, the only thing we've got, we did uh, sex offender registry checks recently. Uh, everybody's in compliance in the area. Uh, we don't have a lot to report right now. We've got our two radars in that uh, we got through a grant. Those came in, uh, so we'll be installing those and everything's going to be running. Uh, we have two people, I think I said this in the last meeting, that we're going to be putting into the uh, part time academy. Uh, that's in June. And uh, just going to keep plugging away. We're getting a lot of applicants right now. We just really don't, uh, you know, we don't have the positions for them. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Questions for Mike? Thank you. One other thing we did for Mike today, too, over there, we put the new, uh, our, we uh, put the uh, radar sign back up to speed limit over, over there by Buffalo Mountain. Oh, it's working again? Well, we'll, we'll see. There's a brand new solar panel, and oh, yeah. if we ever get the sun to charge it back up, we'll see if it works. But. So, yeah, we had problems with that sign uh, pretty much. I think as soon as it went as in. As soon as it went in. Yeah, it worked. Um, brand new, and it's just been a nightmare. Mm-hmm. That solar sign, the other two solar signs seem to be working. Hmm. Uh, it's, you know, we're just, we are moving the other, we have two battery operated signs which we're trying to move around town, uh, put them in different locations. Uh, right now we have one up in uh, East uh, Hardwick, uh, I think it's on Main Street, East Hardwick. The other one's still on West Hill, or Western Street. <coughs> All right, thanks. Um, Next, item one, select board to consider approving various liquor tobacco licenses. We had, uh, it's just one, right? Yeah. That's the Buffalo Mountain Co-op? Yep. Is that right? Second class. I can motion to approve a second class uh, liquor license for the Buffalo Mountain Co-op Incorporated. Second. Uh, and the note says there, there's just a renewal, there are no problems. Uh, discussion or? <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next, item two, Norma Wiesen is here with the Harbor Conservation Commission to present to the select board, or to present the select board with copies of the natural resource inventory report and speak briefly about it. So it says. Ah, you have to pay attention to the briefly. Yes. <laughs> A couple of, more than two years ago, or further back than that, uh, the Conservation Commission had the desire that we have a natural resources inventory done for the town since the town has never had such a thing done. Um, because we see it as a foundational piece of information to be used to know what natural resources and ecological resources we have in the town, where they are, what they are. And it's our responsibility to help people know that information and figure out what are the important things we can do to preserve, improve the natural world in the town, the natural world aspects of the town. And extremely important information for planning purposes for the town um, as the need arises to have new businesses or new homes or, or change this or change that. Um, we need to know as much as we can about the natural resources we have in the town. And a year and a half ago, after searching and not finding money, it takes money to have one of these projects occur, Obi was very supportive and encouraging when ARPA funds came to the town that we should um, think about 
whether the select board would be willing to to fund this project through those ARPA funds. And because you did, we did then hire Matt Peters from Woodbury, who does this kind of work. And he spent the last year and a half gathering and collating all the available information um, provided uh, primarily by the state, and then doing the field work to bring it down to a more uh, molecular level here. State information is more generalized. This is very specific. And the report is finally done. We are thrilled, and we are extremely grateful for your making it possible for us to, to go forward with this project. So, <laughs> Santa comes either late or early, either any way you want to look at it. But we hope to take a look at this, and we are just starting to digest it. It's, it's not uh, light reading. You can't watch TV at the same time. But, um, Thank you. Somebody's and you have one. <laughs> that was me. Thank you. Okay. Is this also going to be available in a digital copy like on, the is on the town website? Nice. Great. Yes. Anybody can. Yes. Oh, that's great. It's okay. We'll let it slide. <laughs> YouTube. <pleasure. laughs> Thank you. Just stop. Right? <laughs> so, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. For yeah, thanks. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Oh, there's a lot there. Yeah. Trust me, there's a lot. There. Great. Can I just ask a really quick question? Super quick. You can ask as many um, questions as you want. Norma, you, well. mentioned, Norma, you mentioned that a part of. A part, it sounds like a part of the next step of this is to start is for, to encourage the town to be using it in decision making. Well, that's what I was hoping to say, yeah. hoping that I was saying that whether it's the planning commission or the DRB or us as a select board, that this is a potentially a tool for right. us to be using as we're considering selling a property, for example, <laughs> or a development in town or something, something like that. So it's, this should be referenced in our town plan. Yeah. Well, wasn't it a goal in the town plan to get right. this? The town done? plan, yeah. yes. Just, the just current town part of the yeah. plan says we should have such a thing. Yeah. Well, now we do. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. This is good. It's an excellent thing. Great. Many other questions or comments while we have Norma here and others. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. And I look forward to reading it. Mm -hmm. This is such an exciting project that item number five now is to put more people on to the Conservation Commission. That's true. <laughs> see, see, this is like an advertisement. But, but item number three, I don't know which item before you jump ahead, yes. is to get an update on the Judavine Memorial yeah. Library project. Um, yeah. I'm Daphne. Hi, Daphne. We, we've got it closed in, you've noticed. Um, yeah. The roof is on, the siding is going up in a couple of weeks, and we're pouring, they're pouring the slab on the downstairs meeting area, um, probably mid-May, or maybe the third week of May. The rough plumbing is being put in, and then there'll be the slab, but the plumbers are almost finished with that. The sprinkler system has gotten worked out, the dry, we have to have a dry system in the old building um, because it's in the attic, um, which it gets a little complicated with nitrogen, et cetera. Um, and we're waiting on the large grant from the Department of Libraries, which seems to be the ongoing saga of this expansion project. Um, the Department of Libraries is the grant is submitted, and we should hear by the end of May, hopefully, possibly beginning of June, um, which is where the big funding issues could arise. Um, but we're in really good position to receive that grant. We've gotten all the right signals from the Department of Libraries. And Andrea 
suggested we apply for another grant for, was it Welch's office for another earmark? Another earmark. Um, that'll be in 2025. Um, and it was written for um, rewiring the existing building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for $75,000? Yeah, something like that. And I've been talking to a private donor about a fairly substantial donation for outdoor patio landscaping. So hmm. I've got fingers crossed. I don't know what the number will be. But any questions? So other than waiting for that that potential grant, Daphne, the number, the budget is looking kind of on point for the project? Sorry, would you? Oh, sorry. Is but basically asking, other than waiting for that grant, the budget is generally on point for the project? Yeah, we did well with the winter conditions because of the weather mm -hmm. was, we were really lucky. So we should get a credit for that, which is really fabulous um, because that added extra expense because of all the delays with all the discovering the spring, et cetera. Um, so we're hopeful for that. The current change orders show 360,000 and the increased cost from the original contract, mostly because of the water situation. The bulk of that was the water. But that's still... Um, there is some contingency built that's in. That's still a part of the contingency, right? The contingency. Well, it's about, it's more than half of the contingency. Or it's half again the contingency. But the, right. the library grant, if we get the full amount, we'll, we'll have the money to finish. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, there's, oh, I, I hate to be the, <laughs> always seem to be things that pop up. Of course, uh -oh. it's construction. Where did that <laughs> come from? And how come? Yeah. So I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm of course, trying to be optimistic, but there's no, there's no sure, sure fire way that we say this is, we're going to be okay if we get that done. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Because that's been our experience, my experience for the past five years. Yeah. How is the um, inner working relationship with your architects, your general contractor, your clerk of the works? Steve Pitkin is fabulous. He's the clerk of the works, yeah. and, and he's on it, um, and he he keeps them on track and watches very carefully. There was a whole issue around the gable trusses and whether the design was appropriate, and they're going to go back and revamp that. The the, Re art, the architect is going to go back. Yeah. Reart also has a contingency, which is our money, mm -hmm. but they have a contingency when stuff happens. Um, so that's also another pot of money that's available okay. and being used. Mm -hmm. Not sure how much of it's been used, but it's been tapped already. Yeah, they're, they, Adam, who is the superintendent over there, is great. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's very positive about the project, and I think all of the players involved are very, are trying really hard to make this happen. Good. Yeah, the biggest issue will be the lag in time when we have the money to send out for bids for the, for the finished work because we can't do that until we have the money nailed down. So that's why the library, the Department of Libraries is driving us kind of nuts. But um, Peter Welch's office was going to nudge them again uh, to see what they can do to speed things up. Because with bids going out, then we get more delays. And in summer, it's real hard to get people to do interior work, like painting and yeah. stuff. So is the part of the plan to basically do the exterior work and then wait to do the interior work until you know that you have the money from the state and then bid that out? Or you're just bidding it out and then hoping? We, we, no, we can't bid it out until we have the money. Okay, so, so there's we're, kind of we're like doing whatever it. we can okay. with the money we have in okay. hand. 
which okay. is most of the rough plumbing, rough electrical, yeah. sprinkler systems. It's the finished work. The, the bones of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sheetrock, etc. Is it going to be like, like sheathed on the outside and everything for that, and it's just the inside work? Like all the siding or masonry will be done. On the the side will be done. The side okay. will be started in a, in a week or two. What if, you said sheet rock's not included in that, or so will it be insulated? The into, yeah, they're doing. They they had the spray foam in there. Okay. They, it'll be insulated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll check. <laughs> Any other questions for the library folks? Well, we really, really appreciate the update. So mm -hmm. Yeah. We can, we can see it every meeting. Yeah. yeah. See it right there. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, next is item five, select board, or sorry, four, select board uh, to consider a letter of support for the downtown partnership and for neck arts, right? Thank you. Yes. So that's me. Oh, that's you, okay. And I, and I can be real quick. Okay. Um, so I would want to tell you about these things anyway, but it's also a requirement of these grants that we get letters of support from the municipal um, government. So the first one is going to sound familiar. It's like, um, what did it say? Deja vu all over again, whatever it was. Um, it's trees, which you said everybody loves trees. Yeah. So I'm sure this is not a problem. Um, we did apply for that grant to do tree planting around the downtown. We didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, however, we were encouraged, uh, this was through the community, urban and community forestry program, it's a state program uh, through ANR, and we were encouraged because they said, there's going to be a whole new grant program just for planting trees. It's about to, you know, be Watch. brought online. Mm -hmm. um, so apply for it under that program. So we we are doing that. So this is basically the identical project that I brought to you previously. Um, I think what happened was urban and community forestry program, you know, I think they're stretched, like a lot of state government, and just didn't have the administrative capacity to manage another grant program. So interestingly, this is happening through the Chittenden County Regional Development Corporation, but it's a statewide grant. So for whatever reason, they've taken on the administration of this program, but, uh, um, Urban and community forestry is still a part of it. So anyway, we're going to take another shot at this. <laughs> um, uh, no match money is available. We're asking for 33,500 plus or minus um, to plant 25 trees around the downtown. This includes soil testing. And Conservation Commission is also a partner in this project, and they're going to help us with some of that. Um, our wonderful tree warden is also helping. <laughs> So anyway, I just we are we are asked to check in with our municipal government to make sure that you are comfortable with the project. Um, no match required. No, ma no money required <laughs> from you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just need the letter. I'm here to answer any questions, and if you're if you decide you're comfortable, I'll have Opie sign something to that effect. I'll just say those are some expensive trees, but. Right. You know, those are some expensive trees. Well, there's a lot more than, than I, just the trees. I know. Yeah. We're buying them, we're planting them, we're testing soil, we're doing some educational work around town. Yep. So. Nevertheless. And if we can get more, we'll get more. Right. Big trees aren't cheaper. Oh, we're planting big trees? Usually they're pretty like, oh. big. Yeah. Yeah. One of the comments we got back from the, because when we didn't get the grant, I was crushed, because usually I just assume we won't get them, because that's just kind of my nature. But this one, I was sure we would get this like a brilliant project. Um, so I asked if I could have any of the comments that mm -hmm. the, board, yeah. the panel had, and one of them said, I don't see how they're going to do all this for that amount of money. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So you need, uh, you just need the, just need to need it needs to be in the minutes of the, of the meeting. I think that would help that the, we'll the, sign the letter saying. Oh, it's a letter. Motion. letter. Yes. Yes. So a motion to, to direct sign. the town manager to provide a letter of support. Can't make a motion because the tree warden is my husband. Okay. <laughs> Somebody else wants to. So make moved. It? Okay. Anybody want to second that? I'll second it. Any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries. 
Thank you. Thank you. So, the and then the second one. Yeah. So the second one, um, I'm working with NetArts on a little grant to support this larger project that they've been working on. So this is the egress and accessibility entry edition. Um, the piece of it that this grant would fund, so we're going after a grant through what's called the Cultural Facilities Grant Program, the Vermont Arts Council ma manages this program, and if we got it, this grant would help to pay for the actual lift that's going to be part of this project that will allow people with mobility issues to get up to the stage. Um, because the building's pretty accessible now, unless of course you're a performer or a presenter, in which case we can get you up there. So. Um, it, we're in a nice position, although, I mean, the project can go forward even if we don't get this grant, but the problem is NetGuards would be dipping very deeply into what really should be their operational money. And so, um, the, the, this piece of the project is only a little bit over $30,000, so we can only ask for half of that, so it's only 15000 but still less 15000 they get to keep and use for programming instead of this. So we're going to... Um, we're going to do that. And because the municipality is the owner of the building, that's the reason it triggers my asking you um, mm -hmm. in this case. So I can motion to approve uh, a letter of support for the cultural facilities. Direct the town manager to provide a letter of support. Provide a letter of support. Yeah, that'd be great. Can I second it? Sure. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I just want to add that I am still working on the homework of creating a policy for uh, we this not not to do with these Tracy, but at okay. one of the meetings we brought up wanting to have a policy for ask supporters of support, so that way if there was a match or like that kind of thing, we were asking the same questions. Mm -hmm. I almost have a draft and it will be available at the next meeting. Uh -huh. It's kind of a complicated thing. Yeah. So. I got it right under the wire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just one sentence? All yeah. the support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or all. Unless yeah, it's the town has <laughs> grant proposal is due on Monday, so this had, there was some urgency with that. Anyway. All right, well thank you, Tracy. Thanks a lot. Item five is select board to consider appointing Tyler Buswell to the Hardwick Conservation Commission for the remainder of a two-year term expiring Oops, June thirtieth, twenty-four. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's it's twenty-five. Okay, twenty-five. No, nope. and Lisa Cathcart, remainder of a four-year term expiring June thirtieth of twenty-seven. And we had letters of interest from mm -hmm. both these people in our packets. Um, sound like they both have. We also checked with some of the HCC members and they knew them and were, were good with them on our board. I can motion to appoint Tyler Bussell to the Harvard Conservation Commission for the remainder of the two year term, expiring June 30th, 2025, and Lisa Cathcart to the remainder of a four year term, expiring June 30th, 2027. Second. Any discussion? But the letters look good. Mm -hmm. um, all right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And just a really quick question for Norma. With these two, does that mean the um, Conservation Commission is fully? We'll have one, we still have one. There's, there's, there's still one vacancy. Somebody stepped down. Okay. Step down. Oh, okay. So we do have one vacancy still, but. So if anybody's interested, they could submit a letter of interest. And they could go to a conservation commission meeting, see what it's all about. All right, item six is select board to consider accepting responsibility for the Fairview, Main Street, and Maple Street cemeteries as the associations have voted to dissolve and hand over to the town. So we haven't received this is all hearsay. We haven't received any um, official minutes to the association meeting, but I've got good sources, and they did. And they dropped off the stuff. To and us. they dropped off the stuff. To us. <laughs> and they met on the twenty fifth or something. No, they met on Wednesday. Oh. Yeah. Not that was uh, last thing Wednesday. Paper about. Last Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. that might have been the twenty fifth. Yeah. 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 So um, we should have the minutes tomorrow, hopefully, and. Um, yeah, I don't, 
We don't really have much of a choice. We don't have a choice mm -hmm. in the matter. Yeah. Um, do we need to? Do we assume <coughs> the um, liability if their poor record keeping is handed over to us? We are straightening that out with our Sexton uh, Kirkyard Services, who has a good bead on what's going on. He's been the Sexton for Fairview and Main Street. Um, so he's on top of that. Okay. And he's been doing the mowing there. Um, and he did the mowing for us last year for the cemeteries we were responsible for last year. But these are all town cemeteries. All town cemeteries. It's just that the town has the option, the voters have the option to, to elect a commission instead of the select board, instead of the select board to manage them, mm -hmm. which we had done mm -hmm. for years. Because there were people that had been doing it for years, but for a few but they're done. Yeah. yeah. And so they're town cemeteries. So and yeah. Is there anything in uh, digging deep that we need to talk about? The only thing I saw in there is it looked like, uh, in my reading, that the voters um, decide, like, I think that the select board would have charge of the cemeteries unless the voters mm -hmm. vote to elect um, a commission. Or something. Yeah. And then the voters can always revert back to select board via another vote, which is not what's happening here. I didn't see anything in there about like if the commission just dissolves. dissolves. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, I don't know. That's the only thing that caught I wasn't my eye. able to dig into this Vermont statue. Or digging deep. Or <laughs> <laughs> so I think that my office has a plan in place. Yeah, to I mean, be I able think to we just have to handle it. Yeah, because had I known on my first day, I had to deal with a huge cemetery issue. Had I known that the town manager's office had to deal with cemeteries, I wouldn't have taken the job. Just kidding. <laughs> so, I thought, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but anyways, um, let's move forward. Okay. I think, yeah, I think we just need to take charge of them and keep them rolling. And I think the only other option that occurred to me is not a very practical option, or it would be we could call a special town meeting to vote on this, but that seems silly. I think we ought to, it seems silly. So we have just next town meeting, we'll deal with it then. We'll manage it until we hit town meeting. Yeah. And then That's great let the voters decide if the select board continues. Yeah. Or if they, or if other people materialize. Yeah. So maybe we should do a really bad job managing the cemeteries before. Right, and then somebody will come out of the woodwork and want to manage them. I think we should do a really good job managing the cemeteries. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. So I don't think we have anything. Mm -hmm. Motion to accept the responsibility of the Fairview, Main Street, and Maple Street cemeteries. Okay. Seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Can I just make one more comment? Really quick. You have a lot of comments. I know. I, this is just, just, what I'm just saying that. You don't have that, to ask. No, I mean, this, is, not, just you just put this in. is just something because it's easy to forget about. That this is going to change. This is going to change our money going into cemeteries. No. A little bit. Not really. We already include that in the budget. Yep. Yeah. No. They're, we the are already paying for maintenance. So, the only thing that's going to change. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, we're going to be a thousand dollars over our cemetery budget. Okay. For 25. Well, for item, the last item, if we yep. move forward with that. And it's theoretically going to increase our cemetery revenue because we mm. do get some revenue from we selling do, the plots. We get right? revenue already for selling the plots. We'll get additional revenue for right. Main Street and Fairview. But that goes, we could use a portion of that for routine maintenance. Okay. Um, we have to update our policy that we just that did. That we just did, yeah. Yep. Um, but there will be an additional $2,400 potentially to pay the sexton to straighten out the records and to manage um, on top of the, the burial fees, open, openings, closings. Um, and then we're going to, he's going to give us a list of 
Kirkyard Services is going to give us a list of projects mm -hmm. that we can use perpetual care funds to complete because some of these cemeteries are in need of repair. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what your original question was. That, 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 that more than answered it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because we already had in our budget quite a lot of money to yeah, and for the mowing and upkeep of these cemeteries. <clears throat> right, and this, it's two additional cemeteries, and they're both large cemeteries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that are in operation. Mm -hmm. In our current fiscal year, we're over more because the Fairview and Main Street didn't have enough money to, for the mowing, so we had to settle up on that. Um, so we are over, but. In fiscal year 25, we only expect 30,000 over because we already increased up to mm -hmm. 23. So, and I haven't discussed this with Kirkyard Services, but I'll let you guys know. Um, I'd like to enter into a three year contract with him so we can f have a fixed price on budgeting for the cemeteries for the next three years. It's going to help our budget, right? Because we could actually put in the number that yeah. we're going to have to pay, yeah, yeah. So more, more to come on that. Um, so moving on then to item seven, which is about accepting a bid from Kirkyard Services for cemetery mowing and for the, for the town's four cemeteries plus um, the three we just added um, for a total of twenty four thousand um, dollars. And I just want to ask, like normally our policy is to go out to bid. I'm s this is the only bid. We haven't. We didn't put this out to bid. Okay. For we would be putting. We could put them all out to bid in one shot. Mm -hmm. But in the past, we put them out to bid individual cemeteries, like Sanborn. Mm -hmm. The town had done some of the cemeteries, the smaller cemeteries. Um, so there is that option of putting this out to bid. But we're running up against the mowing season mm -hmm. and. Get having making sure the cemeteries are up to snuff for visitors, which. Um, and he's already mowing. <laughs> he said he, Maine but, and yeah, he said he would do business as usual until he heard until he heard differently. But this uh, his this service also comes along with the sexton services. Right, and there aren't that many sextons no. around for hire. Right. So this is kind of a... It's an ideal situation for the town. And this is in the best interest of us. Yeah, this is specialized... Yeah, specialized service. Yeah. Okay. I, I think. Yeah. I can articulate it and I can stand behind that if anybody has any complaints. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so could we have a motion to accept the bid from Kirkyard Services for 24000 for the cemeteries? So moved. Uh, I can second that. Any discussion? Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Excellent. Um, select board reports. So the townhouse construction project, we have our permit and we have our contractor and they're supposed to start sometime this week or next week, early May. So we're in May. So it's starting. Construction is starting. Construction is starting. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. That is exciting. Um, and the only day that they're not going to be working, as far as we know, is June 25th. Fourth. June 24th, which is the day that the Vermont Community Development Association is having an all day conference um, in the townhouse. Yeah. And there'll be maybe 150 people in town talking about. Municipalities partnering with, I can't remember the theme. Yeah. But <clears throat> all of a sudden. Public like, private partnerships. Yeah. Something I like that. I can't remember the actual theme. But uh, it's kind of exciting because there will be a lot of people in town. So, yeah. Um, looking at Hardwick and seeing what's going on. So, so, does the townhouse include a new roof? No, this construction does not. Does not. <laughs> no. This is the egress and accessibility project. It's the addition that will house mm -hmm. the the new fire escape yeah. and the uh, accessible lift to the stage. Okay. Yeah, we could roll a roof into it. 
Any other reports? New business? I have new business. Um, so, and I would have put this on the agenda, but it sort of came about after the agenda was created. Um, so, as we kind of talked about earlier in the meeting, we have now surpassed a million dollars in flood expenses. Um, so we've been really fortunate. We've been able to fund that with our own cash without borrowing any money. Um, but the FEMA reimbursements are slow, to say the least. We're 10 months in. We've physically received 13000 and in the queue for another seventy four, um, but not received. We still have an additional $175,000 in repairs in the change orders for the wastewater plant. Um, and then, of course, we have permanent repairs to make on our roads once we get the hydrologic study back. Um, we are not in cash flow trouble at the moment. I want to make that clear. Um, we have to pay the school districts at the end of this month, which takes a big chunk of our current cash. Um, we are always sort of getting in some funds because of water and sewer and taxes. Um, however, um, in light of this, I inquired with our bank about doing a non-revolving line of credit, getting it into place um, in case we needed it because this could be a different story in six to eight months from now as we continue to pay out these expenses. Um, and while I'm optimistic we won't need to use it, I don't want to become scrambled to get something in place should we need it. So um, I've provided you get a bid letter from Union Bank. Um, they're our bank. We have our money with them. Um, it's easy and the likelihood of us using it. It doesn't make sense to go ask other banks where we don't have money, like what, should, what are you gonna, they can give us a good rate because our funds are there. So it's like borrowing our own money. Um, of course, rates aren't that great right now. The proposed is 5.89 if we had to use the funds. So it would be interest on the funds that we use only. Um, and the idea is that the money would be paid back with FEMA reimbursements if we had to use it. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. What do you have for questions? I also have to add that we're still waiting on um, insurance selling from BLCT. So that could cure our cash flow problems. But they still haven't indicated how much money they're going to give us. And at the present moment, we're perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's just that, like I said, when we have to start doing the permanent repairs um, on the roads, and, and because we haven't gotten a million dollars in money that we spent out getting it back, we, we, you know, six, in six months, we're going to start essentially went through two million dollars and we have a four million dollar budget. So, um, what's, what's it going to look like? Um, and so, I feel like this is really just an abundance of caution because it doesn't cost us anything to have it. My um, only question, Casey, is if we do have to use it and it's a 12 month term, if that's enough time to get the FEMA money to then pay the union bank loan. Um, well, it could, it could be like renew and refinance if okay. it had to be because we can only do up to 12 months without going to the voters. Okay. Because they, essentially they call it a current expense note is what it is. Sort of like tax anticipation note. Um, current expense note is what this is, would be called, classified as. So. Um, I think it's smart to have it in the pipeline if we need it. <coughs> and that's, that's all, and I'm, I'm fairly optimistic that we're going to be okay, but I don't want to be scrambling in five or six months from now if things change and we continue to pay out and aren't getting the reimbursements timely. Um, so I can put it in place and have... And we're yeah. also going to have FEMA projects to pay for before the, the permanent work projects, which um, that's going to have to be a whole, whole strategy because um, that money has to come up from, from us. And a lot of towns are borrowing money mm -hmm. to do those projects. Mm -hmm. And Vermont Bond Bank set up a program to borrow yes. money at very good rates. Yeah. Yeah. And I know they all, that already closed at least the first yeah because it round. was in like the first few that months was for like the first three or four months that was for like emergency mm -hmm. work well the electric department did it for um, their permanent work sure yeah, yeah. for the, the
the um, generator. Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons is because of all the permit work we're going to have to do. That's why I'd like to get this in place in case we run into needing it. So I think it's a good idea to get this in place. I think we should also be in communication with Vermont Bond Bank in case there's another round of funding mm -hmm. that's through them because I think that was more like 2 or 3% mm -hmm. money. They didn't have a lot of emergency work to do. The electric department, so right, and they don't well, they had the they operate on thinner margins, too. They do operate on thinner margins, and they there was good that they got it, but yeah. I'm just saying we might if, if we should just pay attention to what the bond bank's offering. Mm -hmm. If it starts looking like we're going to end up borrowing for the permanent projects, right? For the permit, yes, but I think this is this is prudent to get in, yeah, yeah, in place. So where those amounts come from, I just want to make it clear, um, for, sort of to keep it clean, because we have basically, enter, we have the sewer fund mm -hmm. that a lot of those expenses pertain to. The one, there'd actually be two separate lines. One is for sewer and one is for general funds. Mm -hmm. So I took what we've currently accrued in expenses and did 75% of that roughly rounded down a little bit. Um, so it ends up being 350 for the general fund, 675 for the wastewater plant. Um, just because we want to kind of keep that separate because we don't typically commingle those funds. So, we need from us a resolution. Approve opening the two lines of credit, one for general, one for sewer, I mean, bank, totaling $1,025,000 for a term of 12 months. Yeah. So moved. Can I say that? Yeah. Does anyone want to second that? Seconded. Excellent. Any discussion? More discussion? Michael, just a really quick clarifying question, Casey. You said that, so what we're doing tonight is basically saying that this is something we're interested in, but we're not necessarily borrowing the money tomorrow. No, I just want to get it lined well, up. Well, yeah, we can, um, right. I'll send these back to her and then she will send me loan documents. Okay. But I told her there wasn't a huge rush. I, I don't remember what the expiration, like in the next 30 days. This is good for, um, oh, um, it needs to close by June 14th. So like probably at the first June meeting, I would have loan documents for you guys to sign. Okay. So we're not in a big rush, but yeah. Okay. But then it's a line of credit, so it, if we don't use no, it, it's just going to open it up. It's just going to open yeah. them up, and then hopefully we don't. Have to it's do available in case we need it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. uh, so yeah, we had a motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor of opening these lines of credit with the Union Bank, please say aye. 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 Post. Motion carries. Thank you, Casey, for keeping track of all that. Are we talking about old business? Um, new business? Yes. Well, unless is there more new new business? I think old we business. should. Uh, it's been a long meeting, but I think we need to talk about Kerry Road mm -hmm. and um, what we're thinking about for that and what the process for that property is going to be. Right, so we actually have two properties now that people have come to us and expressed interest. Jeff Perry's come and he's expressed interest in the Perry Road property and Vermont Hutz has come and expressed interest in the property next to the clip joint. And um, to me anyway, they both sound like projects that would benefit the town um, in different, very different ways. They're very different properties. Um, yeah, so how do we... I guess, I guess my question is, do we like, do we just set a price for each of them? Do we come up with, a, you know, how are we going to negotiate or like, what value are we placing on those properties if there are people who are interested in them and we know that we want to be selling them? What's kind of the next step? So. I'm not saying. I mean, I I'm think, not saying that we tonight say we're going to sell this property to this person, but I think we need to talk figure about out how it we're going to do it and figure out what, like, if we are going to be selling these properties, how we're going to be doing that. Yep. Um, 
I agree. So, it, to me, it seems like we could. I mean, we we could accept an offer that's proposed to us. Um, we could. So, on one of the properties, we have a proposal of what they would do with it. Mm -hmm. Would we want that for the Cary Road property, or not necessarily? I mean, there's wetlands there. There's a bunch of stuff, but they have to still do the right thing with all that yes so. exactly <clears throat> yep. right so the only um, I guess typically people convey real estate by listing it with a realtor that's common um, I believe that another way the town sometimes sell things, sells things, it just puts a notice in the paper and say we're accepting proposals or bids, mm -hmm. you know, due on a certain date. Um, so, I, I don't know, I guess to me those are the three ways I could see moving forward. You can you could either just accept a proposal that's offered, you could say that's really good but we need to put it out you know, to the world for to the wider community for an amount of time and see if anybody else has a proposal or we could put them on the real estate market. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we did, we talked about this last time in the executive session and it was in, you mentioned, you know, putting it out for a certain amount of time, taking the highest and best bid, or, you know, it's, it's at our discretion which proposal we accept anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know I, don't know, I don't know if anyone else is vying for that next to the clip joint, you know, or if anyone's gonna have a better proposal than VT Huts. Right. You know, that's, if they're gonna put a million dollar, you know, building on that and, you know, and then, um, you know, Jeff seems to be a, you know, long-term resident roots and with the family and he wants to clean up a property that we don't want. I have no problem accepting that, but if we want to put that in the paper, I'm, you know, willing to defer to the rest of you guys as well. And, but that seems like a pretty good proposal. Well, because if you, if you choose to accept his offer, it gets posted in the newspaper anyway what we're doing, what we're planning to do, and that gives people the opportunity to contest because if somebody is like, oh, well, I wanted that too, so they could go get signatures and have it go to a vote instead. So you still give people the opportunity to, to object to it. But if we wanted to avoid that headache, we put an ad in the paper and then say, give us your highest and best. We're taking proposals by June 1st, whatever it is, and then it's out of our discretion to accept a proposal. Well, I just meant like the, the notice to convey real estate that we legally have to post and get the 30 days, like that gives people the opportunity to object if they don't like it. Yeah. Sure. That's true. Yep. So it's a little slightly different to give people an opportunity to object versus giving people an opportunity to bid. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess. I want to know what Danny thinks. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, we do. No. I do. Not for sale right now. I think with. Well, if you're not going to. I don't know. I have nothing to say right now. Okay. My feeling is with both these, I feel like we have proposals. Like I said, that are good. Well, we don't have a full proposal from. Well, neither of them have given us a dollar figure, have they? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have a dollar figure. We haven't counter offered. Oh. We have an offer for the Gary Road property. We, one, we don't. One monetary offer. Yeah. One. One. It, it, it sounds like for the VT huts, we actually need to kind of develop a plan and a, a proposal of saying this is what we would like to see because you know they're taking away parking spots and we talked about further development of parking and you know what that would look like and you know the, the cost value so you know that sounds like a further discussion is needed with them of what they're actually willing to provide to the town in that way um, and then we can make a counter offer to to the carry road if we wanted for the carry road if we wanted it's 
how I understand it. I guess I feel like every people ought to be aware that we're selling these two properties. People ought to be able, if other people have other visions, they ought to be able to bring them forward, but we shouldn't drag it on forever. So I guess I'm, I feel like when you list a property for sale with a realtor, it's kind of an open-ended thing. And if, if we put it. Well, you can, you mean like until somebody bites? <coughs> yeah. You can take it on and off the market. That's true. Market. But I feel like we ought to have it in some way advertised that we're selling these properties. Uh, I don't know. I, they're two very different They properties. are. Very different. Yeah. I mean. But they're both. The one, you know, took the initiative to develop a plan and present it to us. The other one, not so much. But, but much presented a firm property. offer. Property. Hmm. I don't know. Which is different. I don't know if that's a fair comparison, but I um, it's definitely not an apples to apples. Yeah, yeah, I mean one's no. in, one's in Main on Main Street, the other but one's I, a swamp land. But right? I think it's our prerogative to to be equitable when we're doing this. So if we're asking one person, whether it's an organization or an individual, to jump through certain hoops, we have to be asking the same the other person too, because this is at least my time on the board. Other than like a five hundred dollar little parcel, this is the biggest, these are the two biggest kind of value pieces of real estate that we've sold and I think we just need to be fair when we're doing it, doing it and we need to be transparent about it and open about it. So in terms of like how, like the dollar amounts and all that stuff, I don't, it's, that's not as important to me personally as to, as to be able to know what we're doing and saying if, if we want to post it as the town for two months, that's fine. But we need to do that for both properties, I think. I think it's a case by case basis personally, because it's very difficult. Like it's Main Street versus kind of a backwater. It's a very different, you know, again, case by, and, and, and we, we're not in the business of holding property. It's not like we want it necessarily. And I don't think, I hope you said it's not apples to apples here, and, but you know, open to more discussion around it. If, again, it depends on how quickly you guys want to move this and get out from. I I think that the Vermont Huts proposal we countered with a we countered with what we needed from them. Mm -hmm. The balls in the court. If they come back with what we asked then we further the conversation. We haven't committed to anything with them. We've just seen the proposal. And it was in a transparent, open meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, we're still waiting for them. And they're, it sounded like they are, were a little, not completely, what they showed us was a concept not like we're ready to do this. But they're also, you know, I don't know if they were a nonprofit or for profit, yep, but, they, but they have, you know, supposedly funding for, you know, this proposal and, you know, again, putting a million dollar project there where it sounds like the other one was, you know, he expressed his interest here in an open meeting tonight, gave us an offer and said, I want to buy this property. And again, doesn't have a proposal and says, I, I, I'll we'll get around, we hope to put a shed there. And from what I understand, and we'll get around to it when we can, you know, we'll clean up the property. It's, again, it sounds like that's a few acres of swamp land, some of buildable, you know, a buildable lot and with some Building debris, debris. Yeah. So it's gonna take some time for him to develop it. But, you know, again, I think it's case by case. And if we put it out in the paper and someone says, oh, I wanna buy it for this price, we say final and best and make it, you know, discretionary decision and Go, just go with it. I don't know if we need mm -hmm. how many more meetings and the BT huts, it's in their court. So we wait for a proposal from them. And that's, I think, a little more of a discussion since it's right there on Main Street. But with the other one, it's like, I don't hear anyone who's like clamoring for it. No one really cares about it. It's like, we don't want to hold it. But we haven't listed it for sale either. And 
I guess that's my, just my question about equities. We didn't have this conversation when VT Huts came. You were like, great. Like we didn't say we should put it out for other people. Mm -hmm. Like we just kind of said we'll counter it. So I, I, that's just my point. Is like, if like we know that it would benefit the taxpayers to sell this property because to carry red property because then we'd have more money in the grand list, mm -hmm. and we know that it would benefit a local business. And we know it would benefit the folks on Hopkins Hill because there'd be less traffic. There'd be less traffic. So like, do we? If we know all those things, whether or not it's a fancy proposal. And so I guess my question is like, I actually don't think it's equitable to be then like saying, we're gonna put this out to bid for a month because we didn't, we didn't say we were gonna do that for the property in Hardwick, the, in downtown. We just said, okay, great, we'll counter it. So You're that's- You're talking about consistency. Not, I'm just talking about yeah. consistency. So if we wanna counter Jeff's offer, we can do that. But I don't know if we need to create, that, that's, mm. that's just my point is that we didn't like, we were pretty easily able to say, okay, we'll send this counter to VT Huts, and we didn't say, okay, let's post it, mm -hmm. right? So I just, I just think we need to be like, we need to be consistent about it, and if, if our goal is to just be supporting people in Hardwick and businesses in Hardwick, I don't see why we can't just say tonight, let's have a formal conversation with Jeff about what this could look like, or let's counter offer. Like, I, that's just my question, is like why we can't say that? Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, I can say in the spirit of transparency and consistency, we can put them both out to bid and say, hey, there are these properties that are up for sale. You know, if you're interested in buying it or developing a project, we're interested in hearing it. We want to benefit Hardwick and we want, you know, you to, you know, any, any again, anybody invest in Hardwick and that would benefit all of us. And then again, it's maybe we get some people who, give a proposal maybe we don't and then it's again at our discretion to choose and it doesn't sound I, I'm, I'm not and maybe I'm wrong but I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people vying for them maybe there's one or two and then we say yeah this makes the most sense that's the best for you know our constituents so I think we just need to decide so what are we gonna do Jerry. Um, I don't know because they're they're not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Okay. I don't think they can both be have like a blanket. How do same we plan? Um, how do we develop consistency and transparency? You know, we talked about this a year ago and talked about how we needed to have a task force to figure out how we convey property um, with, and knowing that these two properties at least were, there was some interest in the one and we weren't interested in owning the other one. So, yeah, and we never really did that. <laughs> so right. I don't know. Aren't we the task force? <laughs> yeah. Aren't we, yeah. Isn't that like what we're... We, we determined that we could convey property, but I think you take them one by one. Um, and, you know, a fair amount of investment's gone into uh, the proposal that was developed for the downtown spot. I mean, you know... I don't remember how many years ago it was that the Memorial Housing Partnership wanted to buy that little lot because they wanted to have it for parking for their tenants. And we chose, the select board at the time chose not to sell it to them. And I personally am glad that we didn't do that because it used to have a building on it and I'd like to see another building on it. But um, I, my understanding from Kristen is that they have to prove they have parking for mm -hmm. their business that they want to put on that spot. So I don't think it's free and clear they can't well, that was really of, move forward until they figure that part out. That was part of our counter offer is that, you know, this is what we need from you to, you know. It, it's not it, even need, it's required. It's well, part of our zoning. Yeah, but that's okay. That's what need yeah. is to, you know, it's like <laughs> we're requiring them to do that. And, you know, yeah. if we're going to accept that proposal and, and again, it's like if we own it as the town and we are elected to then 
act as the town. I think it's just at our discretion. Yeah, I just think that one's in process because we've already done that. Agreed. The yeah. other one isn't in process. We sure. haven't done that. Right. But we do have a, a an offer on it. And so it's yeah. now it's, an, it's, on our, it's yeah. on our court. Because you, yeah. you, 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 you missed last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, I missed a meeting this year. I know. <laughs> this decade. So one, the ball is not in our court. The other one, the ball is in our court. Right. So, do you are we making a decision on anything tonight, or are we kicking it down the road? I'm kicking it. I mean, the meeting that I was at, we t we gave Opie the. Main Street property to discuss with them. To continue that conversation right. with them. Yep. So I, I see no reason to not do the same for this property. To continue the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, the, well, it's you okay. Gave specific things to discuss with them. Right. So, what would you like me to discuss with Jeff? A timeline, maybe? When's he going to clean it up? What's he gonna, when's he going to build us? His garage. I don't know. Is that something that we can? Does this matter? <laughs> like, mm. are there other? Are yeah, I don't know. That are there are there objections to this? Can you sell somebody like a yeah, car. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't tell me what to do. With, yeah, I know. Like, how fast are you yeah. gonna drive this? Right. I, I get that it's different. I mean, I'm aware. Like, yeah. I like I said. Does it matter? I'm like. Yeah. I'm reaching here. Yeah. No. I don't. Again, are there objections to this? Jeff, right. And, unless. I mean, you tell me that to counter offer. I'm personally open to saying, you know, we need your final and best offer and or we're you know, we're gonna put it out to bid and go from there. And we either accept it or say no thanks, we'll go out to bid. Or do you make a counter offer? Right. That's also true. Well, whatever you guys gotta do to sleep in. I mean, <laughs> I'd like to ask Danny one more time, but I won't push you too hard. Probably best. Yeah, I'm, but I think you have a valuable input. Is I what think I'm we saying. push it to the next meeting, and we have an executive session possibly to discuss it. I, I'm not comfortable with the fact that Danny's not participating in this I'm conversation. I, I mean, participated. But you're in the past. I have nothing new to add. Okay. And everybody, you, you all know what his participation was, and I missed it. So you decide. If we're going to get into the particulars of the bid, or want to do a counter offer. Not here. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And we could do that tonight. Well, it's not on our agenda, though, is it? Nope. No. Nope. So we can do it next time. Yeah. Yeah. Can't add it out yet. Let's, so let's do it next time. Well, the issue hasn't been resolved. How are we going to convey it? What you, yeah, I, what are you going to do next time? Well, we're going to have an executive session to discuss the particulars and decide. Yeah, but, we, but we're just talking. But you're, set, you're getting ahead of yourself yeah. again. Yeah. We're tonight we're going to decide how you're going to decide. So we could decide tonight, are we going to enter into negotiations with Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Or are we going to um, put it to bed? And, oh, because before, at some point previously, we directed Opie to go to Menard. Brenda Menard. Yeah. And which was done. Which, which was, was done, and we just barely got that today, I think. Um, so we could, I guess I'd like to see that market analysis and this. Okay. I got it today. Okay. It's certainly going to complicate things. It is? Have you seen it? Yeah, I got it. Mm-hmm. Silliness. But. <laughs> so, um. All right. 
we could give everybody a chance to review that. We could come back next time too with um, whether we think we need to list it for sale in some fashion or if we just want to negotiate with Jeff who's actually given us a, a real offer. Does that work? Because I feel like we're not coming to a decision right now. Okay. Let's do that. Any other old business, new business, or reports? Say adjourn. Thank you, everybody.